Hello and welcome to today's live video. So today we're going to be talking all about fasting, especially in the context of, of healing. So I know you can fast for many different reasons, but we're going to look at it today through the lens of fasting to heal, because this is more intricate than for a normal person. So when you're already in good health, fasting is just as simple as just don't eat and then that's it, you're fasting. But when you've got blood sugar dysregulation, you've got adrenal fatigue, when you've got different types of digestive problems going on, it can be way, way more tricky and it's more intricate and nuanced in the approach. And you have to go into this with a more, you have to go into this more gently. You have to be softer with the body because it's doing, a, doing an extended fast or just a water fast, for example, is gonna to be too harsh for the body. So let me, let me tell you first of all, before we even, even touch on this, we're even gonna go over the benefits and stuff, but before we do this, I wanna tell you about how I learned about this what, this, what this did for me, and why I now use this in almost all of my one-to-one uh, -one client work, because it's such a foundational principle of, of healing. Fasting to heal. How did I learn about this in the first place? So. I had several severely chronic debilitating health conditions. And I say had because I don't have them anymore. So this played a big part in, in that reversal process. So the things that I attribute most that fasting helped me with would be improvements in fatigue and fatigue-like expressions. So chronic fatigue syndrome, adrenal fatigue, um, the associated toxicity component that went in with that. So we've got, we're gonna talk about detox here. Fasting is amazing for detoxification if you're doing it properly. And this is, this is why I wanna talk about it in the context of fasting to heal, not just fasting full stop. Because if you fast full stop, it's gonna help you to detoxify. But you have to be gentle when you're doing it in a chronic, when you have a chronic health problem, because you need to be more gentle with your body and you need to make sure you're supporting it through the process. So what we're gonna be talking about here is I'm gonna walk you through an introduction fast. We're gonna be like doing a full day of, of fasting, what this actually looks like. And this is, this is modified to be suitable for people with chronic health problems, with adrenal fatigue, with chronic fatigue, with um, digestive problems. And this is something I used myself when I was extremely malnourished. So I was very underweight. This is something that I used when I was absolutely disabled. So I was blinded, I was bedridden. Down here we've got, uh, it's going to say you're going to want to when you're fasting you want to spend the day in bed that was a normal day for me at that point anyway i couldn't do anything other than spend the day in bed but we're going to we're going to talk about that we're going to talk about all this as we get down so it's important to understand that if you're going to fast to heal you need to be more gentle and i'm going to walk you through how we can be more gentle so we can get all of the benefits of fasting and none of the drawbacks and i mean none we're really going to avoid all of them by by making this approach a little bit more gentle so first of all what are the benefits we're gonna improve detoxification during and after the fast. We can reset our insulin and our insulin sensitivity. So this is gonna be helpful for people with diabetes, pre-diabetes, blood sugar imbalances, this can be really helpful. We're gonna help with autophagy. So autophagy is a process where your body is recycling broken and damaged cells. It's breaking them down and then using those ingredients in the detoxification process or using them to build new healthy cells. This is a huge one for the the, the problem that occurs, so if you, if you have chronic fatigue syndrome or any kind of post-exercise fatigue, this autophagy component is fantastic. As a consequence of the damage to the mitochondria, they cannot produce energy for you and instead are producing reactive oxygen species which just damage your cells, your tissues, your mitochondria and perpetuate this cycle even more. So this is a huge part of this. We've got rest the GI, so you can imagine fasting, we, we're not going to be eating anything or we're going to be eating very little, which means the, the gut is going to get a nice nice break is gonna get a good reset and it boosts your immunity so this doesn't happen during the fast it happens afterwards during the process of fasting this 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 in this autophagy phase your body is gonna go through and eat all of your immune cells including the ones that are dysfunctional so you're gonna see the the immune function reset you're gonna see a lot of the damaged uh, immune cells get killed off and broken down using autophagy and they're, they're gonna be rebuilt after the fast so this happens between one and four days after the fast so this can reset your whole immune system as well, which can be really helpful, especially if you, like I, was dealing with uh, different types of chronic infections like Lyme, EBV. The only way you truly get on top of these kinds of infections is by building your innate immune system back up and fasting can be really helpful for that. So 
I'm gonna walk you through a, a basic, this is like the basic level one fast. I feel quite comfortable, so again, not medical advice, nothing I ever talk about is medical advice, but I would feel quite comfortable saying that for the vast majority, 90 to 99% of people that are watching this, this is going to be safe. This is going to be a safe fast for people to do. There are variations and additions on this, so we can look at doing them longer, we can look at changing them around a little bit. I would say work with a professional, reach out to me if you need a little bit of help figuring out what's gonna be right for you. We can talk about how we can implement fasting in your, in your protocol. But I would say, generally, you're gonna get 90% of the benefits of fasting, just doing this fast alone, just, just doing exactly what I have here. So without any modifications, without any tweaks, without doing anything differently, you will get at least 90% of the benefits of fasting just by following this template. So this is, this is all you really need to know. So you're gonna wake up, I've put times here. These times don't, they're not necessarily accurate. If you wake up at seven o'clock, just change this for seven, change this for half seven. Just modify the times to when you actually wake up. But I've given them standardized times just to make it easier to talk about. So you wanna wake up whenever you usually wake up. And within 30 minutes of getting up, you wanna have breakfast. So during this breakfast, you wanna have at least 30 grams of fat, 30 grams of protein. This is really important because it's going to help to stabilize your blood sugars for the first four to six hours of the day, which is gonna be really helpful. It's also gonna to help to calm any adrenal response. So if you have adrenal fatigue, one of the most stressful things for your body is not eating. And fasting, for this reason, is very stressful for people with adrenal fatigue. But we can make this like 70% less damaging. We can, we can support the body to a, a huge degree just by having breakfast. And in that breakfast, having 30 grams of fat and 30 grams of protein. What this is gonna do, this is going to buffer the body's stress response. So the morning cortisol that we release that gives us energy for the day, instead of, because if you, if you wake up and you don't eat anything, you just burn, you, so you get that cortisol release and your body just burns through it really quickly. And then you're in fatigue and you're in adrenal exhaustion and you're, you're stressing your body out. So instead what we're doing is we're having that spike and then we're having breakfast, which buffers the cortisol burn through the day so that you don't just dump it all straight after, straight after you wake up. So this is gonna calm blood sugar instabilities, this is gonna make you feel better throughout the day, this is gonna reduce uh, hunger cravings, this is going to generally make the fast more productive. This is also telling your body that there is food around and it doesn't need to slow its metabolism down, which is really important. If we fast in a way that, that, that dysregulates your metabolism and pulls your metabolic function down, you're gonna do all of, the, all of the benefits of fasting are gonna be slowed down. So you're gonna do autophagy, so we've got here, you're gonna do autophagy slower. Your GI isn't gonna be able to heal as quickly. Your immune system's not gonna reset as strongly. You're not gonna detox even half as quickly. So doing it this way, not only makes the fast more effective, it also makes it safer because you stabilize blood sugars and, and stress hormones as well. So we have a good breakfast. This is a minimum, okay? We're not trying to achieve a deficit in calories at all here. That's not what we're doing with this fast. That's, that's fasting for weight loss or fasting for other things. We're not doing that here. We're fasting to try to help your body heal and your body doesn't heal in a deficit. So if you can take all of the food that you'd usually eat in a day and eat it at breakfast and digest it okay, absolutely do that. We're not trying, with this fast, we're not trying to deprive your body of food. We are simply trying to create space so that it's able to prioritize all of the jobs that it hasn't been able to prioritize because it's always working on digesting your food. So if you can have your breakfast and your lunch in your breakfast meal and you can eat 1,400 calories in one go, absolutely do it. The, most you, the more you can eat, the better this will be. And you wanna combine it just into that one small meal right at the beginning of the day. So we, after, that, after this breakfast, we move on and I've got some, some options here. So when, you're, when you first start doing this, and if you've never fasted before or if you're in a state of really, really, really poor health, I would not suggest just doing a pure water fast. It's too hard for your body. Your body's probably already depleted of nutrients to the point where Fasting isn't actually supportive, it's just depriving yourself and your body's just, it's not even, it's not healthful. You're just depriving yourself and your body is, it's basically just starving. You're not actually, like fasting is to abstain from food for a health benefit or for some kind of benefit. If there's no benefit, you're not fasting, you're just starving. So what I would suggest in a case like this is during the day, we're drinking juice and broth. So juice here, I would include low carbohydrate vegetable juices. So this would be a really good example juice to be would be something like celery or cucumber as the base. So this is making up most of the juice. 
Some greens thrown in there as well. So this could be like lettuce, this could be cabbage, this could be kale. I wouldn't use spinach, quite high in oxalates, but all those other green vegetables, they're, they're quite okay. And maybe something that adds a little bit of flavor or, or a little bit of sweetness. We don't want too much sweetness because we're trying to reset your insulin. So if we're spiking it through the day, it's not gonna be very helpful. So something like a little bit of carrot or some sour green apples, some Granny Smith apples, and a little bit of lemon and ginger can also be really good. Obviously, if you have food sensitivities to these things, don't do them. Juice things that you know you're okay with. If you know the only vegetable you tolerate is courgettes, juice courgettes, okay? You don't, don't just follow this recipe because I'm giving it to you. What's important here to understand is, in the juice, we wanna be drinking as much as you feel you're able to drink comfortably. So if you're thirsty throughout the day, drink it. This is gonna help with electrolytes, this is gonna help with soluble fiber in the gut, which is gonna keep your digestive system moving, which is important during this process. It's gonna be providing minerals, it's gonna be providing enzymes that support the detoxification process. It's gonna be providing a lot of stuff to your body that's gonna make this more gentle. So it's really important that we provide the body with, with, with some resources through this fast. So it's still being fueled to support this detoxification process and, and all of these other things. So juice what works for you. Drink as much as you feel like you can. I would think of this more as like a juice feast. So the more juice you can drink comfortably, the better it's gonna be. You're gonna provide your body with more of the ingredients that it needs to do all of these jobs. So there's, there's, there's not really much benefit to not having more, just, just drink more juice if you can. And if you tolerate broth and you, wanna, and you wanna have broth as well, so this would be like a bone broth or a, if you're familiar with a GAPS diet, this would be more like a meat stock. We don't want the fat on the top in this case because we are trying to avoid eating anything that's providing sort of like caloric density, but skimmed broth, so just the, the broth that doesn't have any fat on the top, is, is excellent. This can really help if you have the digestive problems and if you're not so focused on the autophagy component because when we're having broth we're providing the body with a lot of excess proteins which is going to reduce the need for the body to break down the damaged structure the damaged protein structures so it's gonna this this works really nicely if when you try fasting it's too much you know you feel loads of symptoms you get really achy you have loads of problems this just means it's it's making your body do things too quickly so by in, in all cases, I would juice if you can tolerate vegetables. And in cases where auto you're not so focused on autophagy or where the fast kind of happens too quickly, you have too many symptoms, I would include broth as well. So you can include both of these. For me personally, I did not tolerate broth in, my, in the initial stages of my, of my healing journey. So this was done just with juice. And I would drink on average about a liter a day. But the numbers aren't important. It's about just drinking how much you feel like you're able to drink and juicing whatever you can juice. For me, all I could juice was kale. All I could drink was just kale juice. Now I can juice whatever I want and I would definitely not juice just kale because it's not very nice and there's benefits to having other things in the diet as well. So we're gonna do this for 24 hours. So after your breakfast, you're probably gonna be pretty full because as I said, we're not trying to restrict your food intake at this point. We're just, we're just trying to provide your body with as much resources as possible. Probably not gonna feel hungry for maybe like four hours. When you start to feel hungry again or when you feel like you have some space, Start drinking some juice or some broth. You can drink water as well. I would definitely drink juice where you can because as I said, this is re your body's gonna be doing a lot of work here. So we wanna make sure that we're providing it with a lot of resources. And we're gonna do this for 24 hours. So whenever you, whenever you eat your breakfast, so here I've got 9.30, this can be whatever time it is. When, whenever it is you have your breakfast, you basically just don't wanna eat anything apart from juice and broth. If you wanna do tea and coffee, as long as it's like low, 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 um, low calorie, it's, it's fine. If you're kind of like me, where you're in a really ill state of health, don't use stimulants, don't use coffee. It's giving you fake energy. It's just giving you stress hormone energy, which isn't gonna help you heal. So the best thing you can do is just do some broth and I've got some instructions down here. We're gonna talk a bit more about what to do on the fast. So then you're gonna, you're gonna sleep, you're gonna go to bed at your normal time. You might wanna go to bed early. I feel quite tired and go to bed early, but I find my sleep is really refreshing when I'm fasting. So I usually wake up early. And this doesn't even have to be 24 hours. You know, here I've got, sleep for your normal amount of time, wake up at your normal time, and then eat breakfast first thing when you get up. You'll probably feel, be feeling really hungry. If you wake up early because you're fasting, you can eat straight away. That's probably gonna be better than leaving it an extra two hours, say for example, say you usually wake up at nine, but say you wake up at seven because you're fasting. It's gonna be better to just have your breakfast straight away and only do a 22 hour fast because we're mitigating the stress response from the, the cortisol release again. So. One thing is you might want to eat a little bit less. This depends on you. So I found that 
because I was, I was really ill, when I fasted, my body really swapped its metabolism away from digestion into doing the other jobs, the detoxification, the, the cleaning up of my body. And it was really hard because I had so much work to do. My body didn't really want to shift back into doing like the digestive process again. And I found I had to eat less the day after I broke the fast because my digestive capacity was just really low. So for some people, this is the case. I've seen, I've worked with other people where they can eat just as much or if not more, because they're, obviously they're more hungry because they haven't eaten the day before. So play it by ear, listen to what your body says. If you don't feel good eating so much food the day after you break the fast, eat a little bit less and then build it back up slowly over the next few days. So the instructions on the fasting day, you need to rest. So this, this is a bed day. This means you are literally laying in bed. The, the only reasons you're getting out of bed during this fast are to go to the toilet or to get juice or broth from the fridge or to heat up broth on the, on the oven. That's all you're doing in the day. You're literally just in bed. When you get to the, to the later stages, maybe you can go for a very slow paced walk or maybe you can sit in a comfy chair. But I'm saying this because I really wanna emphasize, when you are fasting, your body is doing so much work and it needs to have all of the energy that your body is producing to work on all of those things. So you really wanna be in bed. For me, this was laying in bed, listen to an audio book. I would listen to, uh, you saw here, I've got read and journal. You can, you can write out plans, you can do your manifestation journal, your gratitude journal. You can read, I like to, I, I like to listen to, to audio books or YouTube videos. So I would listen to books about like metaphysics, a really good book that you might find interesting would be The Game of Life and How to Play It by Florence Shrivel Shin. Amazing book. I really love listening to that while I'm fasting. You could listen to or you could read scripture. So you could read the Quran or the Bible. And you don't even have to be religious. If you are religious, then great. Read your preferred religious text. If you're not, like myself, I don't follow any religion, there's still a lot of wisdom in those religious texts. So give them a read. You'll, you'll grow a lot. You can use that fast to grow spiritually as well as to heal physically as well. So you can get multiple benefits there. And it's really nice to just unplug from technology. So don't lay in bed and tell yourself that you're resting when you're actually you're scrolling through social media or you're playing video games or you're, you're doing some really stimulating activity. You really need to be doing nothing. And I know it's boring, I know, but you wanna heal, so you've gotta do some things you don't really wanna do. And it really sucks, it really sucked for me, but look, I'm, I'm healed, right? I don't have chronic fatigue syndrome anymore. This really helped, so seriously do it, it's worth your effort. Here I've got zero exercise. Again, if you're in the later stages, maybe you can look at going for a, a, a small light walk. But I say this because I really wanna emphasize, you need to be resting. Your body is doing a lot of work and it doesn't have a lot of resources. So just stay in bed. I, I, I'll say this again and again, because when I do this with my one-to-one -one clients, they're like, oh yeah, I pushed myself and I felt really bad the next day. And oh yeah, I had loads of coffee and it was all great. And then I'm, now I'm crashed. It's like, you need to rest. Okay, just rest. I know how hard it is to do it, and I know how much I struggled with it, but that's why I'm saying it with so much emphasis. Just stay in your bed, just rest, okay? Your body is working to heal you. So just rest, just give it the space that it needs. I know it's hard, but just, just do it, okay? Just rest. You're only doing it occasionally, and it's gonna make the days that you aren't resting, you're gonna be so much more full of energy. You're gonna be able to do so much more. You're gonna enjoy your life so much more, but you need to rest in order to have those days. So just take the day and stay in bed, okay? It's not that long, it's one day. And then I've got here, repeat three times a month. So you can do this, you can do this once a week. I'd say on average, a good, a good amount of fasting to do per month is about three days in a month. As I've said, there are, there are higher levels to this, but I don't really feel comfortable covering them in, in, a, in a video like this because they're, they're more intricate. They can be, you can, you might think like, oh, if I fast more, I'll get better results. That's not the case. It's really a case by case kind of basis. And you really need to look at this from a personalized perspective. So if, you, if you're interested in doing something a bit, a bit more tricky, a bit more uh, complicated, then reach out and let me know. But you're gonna get 90% of the benefits just doing this alone, okay? So you don't need to overcomplicate things. This will work. This is a really good way to do it. I did at least I would say I did 25 to 30 of these fasts through my healing process and they really make a big difference. And I've tried extended five day fasts. I've started, tried three day fasts. I've tried lots of different things. If you just do this, I know it's not as fun to say, oh yeah, I did a one day fast three times this month. Instead you wanna say like, oh, I did a one week water fast or I fasted for a month. 
It's not helpful, okay? That's just your ego saying, oh, I just wanna do something that makes me look really good. It's like, this, the, the basics are where it's at. So if you just do this consistently, this is where you're gonna get the results. It's easier, it's more gentle on your body, it gets you better results, okay? Don't make it complicated, this is the best way to do it. So now we have to talk about refeeding because you can only talk so much about fasting without talking about refeeding because the refeeding is actually the most important part. The fasting is where your body is using the resources that you've provided to heal itself. But if you don't provide it with the resources beforehand, it's not fasting, it's starving. So we have to make sure that we're providing your body with enough resources in between these fasts. So I would say if you've never fasted before, we've got, so let me, let me go through these. So we've got a minimum 2,200 calories a day. This is a minimum, okay? And I know I'm gonna get somebody that's five foot five or four foot nine that are really small, maybe an old lady like, oh, but 2,200 calories is a lot. This is the baseline minimum that you really need to be eating regardless of how old you are or how small you are. Your brain alone uses 40% of the calories you eat. Even if you're tiny, you have the same size brain. So you, this, is, this is a minimum, okay? When we're implementing fasting, there's gonna be some level of calorie deficit. And we don't, that's not really what we're trying to do here. We're not trying to destroy your metabolism. We're trying to build your metabolism up. So I say this really is a minimum. I'll give you an example. So even when I used to do the fasting, um, when I first started, I was still eating about 2,500 to 3,000 calories a day. Yes, I am a bit taller. Yes, I am a bit, a bit bigger. But, but still, this is, this is a minimum, okay? Nowadays, I'll easily dust off 3,000 to 3,500 calories a day. So if you're implementing fasting, you really need to make sure that you're having at least the bare minimum on the other days, preferably some excess. So this is a bare minimum. If you're eating under 2,200 calories on average, I would say you need to at least eat this much for one month before you can even start fasting. Because you're not fasting, you're starving and it's not helping you. It's not helping you heal, it's just making you sick. So make sure that you provide your body with the resources that it needs to do the work during the fasting. Otherwise, it isn't doing work, it's just trying to stay alive. So that's really important. And in between fasts, so say you're doing three fasting days in a month, you need to make sure you're, you're refeeding in those weeks in between the fasts. It's really, really important. and it, significantly affects the results of the fast. Your body's gonna do far more productive work during the fasting window if it's been provided excess of the nutrients that it needs because it will use those nutrients up during the fast. Down here, we've got nutrient density. So here we're looking more at macronutrients. So just making sure that your body has enough fuel to operate. But down here, we've got nutrient density. We're looking more at micronutrients. So again, if you've had a a deficit of calories for a long time, you probably also have a nutritional deficiency as well. I would encourage you to be doing the juice and the broth, if you tolerate them, at least a month before you start the first fast, because this is gonna make sure that your body is fully replenished and fully is, has a full availability of nutrients to make the fast actually productive. You're gonna get way more results. It's gonna be way gentler. You're gonna have way more success if your body has what it needs during the fast. So. Make sure that if you are doing fasting, I'm not saying to just do the juice and the broth while you're fasting. You wanna be doing these on the days in between the fasting as well. And it doesn't, you can just fit them in in your regular daily routine. Say you have your breakfast, have some vegetable juice with it. Have some vegetable juice through the day. If you make, like if you're having meals that are soup, make sure you're using broth as the base. So you're incorporating these nutritionally dense foods into your, your, your daily plan of eating. So some other, other things that are important to note, to note here is we want to encourage other foods that are very high in nutritional density. So th to me, this would be things like organ meats. If you're eating a liver two or three times a week, you're gonna be providing your body with more nutrients in one of those meals than probably from all of the juicing, all of the broth, and all the other food that you eat in the whole rest of the week. So when it comes to nutrient density, you really can't beat organ meats, especially liver. Liver is on a completely different level. But this would also include things like um, egg yolks, caviar, um, oily fish, so you've got in the EPA and the DHA, making sure that you're getting all of these nutrients so that when your body is going through fasting, it has all of these nutrients ready to break down the old cells and build the new ones with the healthy materials that it needs. I would support detoxification in between as well. So this can look different for everybody. Again, more of a personalized thing. If you need help with that, let me know. But this could look like things like coffee enemas, Epsom salt baths. To, make, to take this a step further, it's possible to incorporate some of these things into, into the fasting day as well. I would find that having an Epsom salts bath 
before I went to bed was amazing for me. It helped a lot with muscle fatigue, it helped a lot with cramps. I would often start my fasts off with a coffee enema as well. But this isn't necessary. This is more of a, a, an advanced concept. So I wouldn't encourage you to do these things without maybe talking with somebody or if you really do know what you're doing, then proceed with caution. But you wanna be supporting your detox in between. So this is primarily, again, this is about making sure that you have enough calories, make sure you have enough micronutrients. Because your body knows how to detoxify all by itself. You just have to give it the right ingredients. And finally, we've got the microbiome. So your microbiome plays a huge impact on the benefits of fasting. You're gonna change your microflora composition. If you've got pathogenic organisms during a fast, your body is gonna go through and systemically eat them. If they're present because you have accumulated toxicity, your body's gonna be going through and detoxifying that. And you need to make sure that you have a strong microbiome through this process. So maybe this is a probiotic, maybe this is fermented foods. Again, quite an individualized thing, but make sure that you're supporting your microbiome in between the fasts. So one final note, one final instruction that I would add, during the fast, I wouldn't take any of your detox supplements, I wouldn't take any probiotics, I wouldn't take any uh, killing or antimicrobial herbs, I would just take the bare minimum of supplements you need to do. I would, I would actually not even take vitamin D. So this can be really cool. When you fast and you don't take vitamin D, you can, you can really, really interesting side tangent, but we'll go there. So certain microbes, can, or especially viruses, can produce molecules that plug into your vitamin D receptors. And when we fast, your body is gonna go through and clear all of those out. And if you have vitamin D present, it doesn't do that so effectively. So on, the, on this day, it, when you're fasting, it's a really good idea to, to temporarily pause all non-essential supplements. So if you have like, if you have MTHFR and you know you need folate, then obviously still take your folate. But in this case, I would like pause vitamin D, pause probiotics, pause any killing protocols that you're doing. Just pause them for the day and the day after. So stop until a day after you, you break the fast. And this will help your body to try to prioritize doing the jobs that it actually wants to do instead of the jobs that you're making it do. And your body is way smarter than you are. Your body knows how to do this stuff if you give it the right space. So what we're trying to do here is give it that space. So to recap, the benefits are broad. I didn't even write them all here, but literally if you've got any kind of health problem, fasting I almost guarantee will, will be helpful for it. If you've got any kind of neurodegenerative condition, if you've got any kind of inflammatory condition, if you've got any kind of autoimmune condition, if you've got any kind of digestive problem, if you've got a mental health problem, fasting can help. So the benefits are broad. This is a general template of what I would suggest you try. This is a basic level thing. If I was, say I was gonna do a fast tomorrow, this is what I would do. With everything that I know, this is how I would do it. This is the safest, this is the most effective, this is the, this is the optimal way to do it. It just makes sense. So this is how I would do it. I find that this works best for people who are in a poor state of health, this works for people who are depleted. This is the best way to do it. You don't have to do advanced five day water fasts. Get your ego out of the game. You don't need to do that. This is the best option. In the refeeding, so in between, in between fasting and I would say if you're not doing this already, if you can't say you're doing all of these things already, prioritize doing these things for a month before you start the fast. So 2,200 calories a day. Again, this is for a, a four foot nine, tiny elderly lady, okay? This is, a, this is a minimum. So for me, I'm nearly six foot, 5'11", five, and I'm, as you can see, I'm quite, quite big, quite broad. I'm looking like 3,000 to 3,500 calories in a day. And especially when I'm working and I'm using my, my noggin a lot, this is gonna be increased because your brain's using most of your energy. And you're gonna be using more energy when you're detoxing and stuff like this. So this is a minimum. Nutritional density. So you wanna get juicing, you wanna get broth, you wanna get organ meats, you wanna get living food, probiotics, um, fermented foods, stuff like that in your, in your diet. Th doing these two alone is gonna really help with the detox and the microbiome. But you wanna make sure you're doing these as well. And instructions on the day rest stay in bed just stay in bed okay it's such an easy instruction it's so hard to follow but just try to stay in bed there's probably other components that contribute to your illness like being constantly hyper stimulated being hyper vigilant having anxiety this is a really good opportunity to sit with them and figure them out so you can solve those components of your illness as well so stay in your bed if you can nap nap do restorative things rest your only reason for getting out of bed is to drink your juice. We're not even making juice, okay? If you're gonna do this, make the juice the day before. We're not making juice while you're fasting. It's not a good idea. Heating up your broth. 
and going to the toilet. That is it. And I'll add one exception, having a bath at night. If you're having a hot Epsom salts bath, something like that. Otherwise, you're doing nothing. You're doing nothing. You're not doing anything, okay? So just to emphasize, you're doing nothing. You're resting in bed. That is it. That's the, the excitement for your day is listening to an audio book on your phone. That is the, the most exciting thing that you do. So no exercise. Again, you're not exercising if you're in bed, right? So good, you're in bed, so you're not doing exercise. So this point isn't relevant anyway, because you're just staying in bed, so that's fine. So you can read and journal. Read scripture, it's really good, it's really interesting, it's really helpful. You don't have to be religious to learn from scripture, it's really helpful, trust me, it helped me a lot. I read the Bible, I read the Quran, I read lots of different types of religious texts. It will really help you grow as a person. If, you've, if, you, if you're not religious and you've never read a religious text, maybe you should ask the question like, why haven't you read them? Because you don't even know, you don't, maybe you are religious and you don't even know it yet. But even still, I read them, I'm still not religious, but I think they're some of the most valuable books on the planet, so read them. And repeat this up to three times a month. So you might not be ready for this. Doing this once a month, once a month is where I started and that's enough to start seeing progress. So be gentle with yourself. I struggled with lots of food sensitivity so it was really hard for me to get all of this stuff in over here the the calorie intake the nutrients the detox and the the gut flora i can only do this once a month if that's where you're at then that's where you're at but i'll try to aim for getting to about three times a month that's where you're going to get the best benefits so that's everything for today i'm just going to see if we have any questions so if you have any questions please let me know so let's see let me know if you've enjoyed it if you if you've enjoyed so far give me a like give me a heart give me a subscribe if you're watching on youtube